all of IGCAC computer science. Let's begin off with the number systems. Starting off with the first number system is the binary number system. This is a base 2 number system and has two possible values from 0 to 1. Then we have the denary number system. The denary number system is a base 10 number system and has the values 0 to 9. We then have the hexadecimal number system which is a base 16 number system and has the values from 0 to 9 then followed by A to F. To convert from binary to denary we use this table, the row below is the binary number, everywhere there is a 1 we add it up, so in this case 8 plus 4 plus 2 giving us 14 as denary. To convert from denary to binary we do the opposite and find the combination to find our denary number. To do hexadecimal to binary, this is our hexadecimal number, you put 1, 2, 4, 8 below each digit and then you make the combination to get 9 and 8. Then to do hexadecimal to denary, what you simply have to do, this is our hexadecimal number, we have to do 1, 16 and 256 and multiply it with each digit. Then to do binary addition, we need to cram this table right here and you also need to know about the overflow error. Finally, moving on after this, we need to know the uses of hexadecimal which is defining colors in HTML, memory dumps and MAC addresses. Let's talk about sound now. Here we have the sampling resolution, which is the number of bits taken per sample. And we have the sampling rate, which is the number of sound samples taken per second. Moving on to the definitions of images, we have bitmap images, which are made up of pixels, color depth, which is the number of bits used to represent each color, and image resolution, which refers to the number of pixels that make up an image. Now talking about file types, we have the MIDI, the MP3, the MP4 and the JPEG. Moving on to compression, we have two types of compressions, lossless compression and lossy compression. Lossless, no data is lost and with lossy it is impossible to get the original file back once it has com been compressed. Data transmission, within data packets we have the packet structure and the packet switching. The packet structure is the header, payload and trailer and the packet switching is when data is broken into multiple packets. Simplex data transmission is in one direction only. Half duplex data transmission is in both directions but not at the same time. Full duplex data transmission is in both directions simultaneously. Serial data transmission is when data is sent one bit at a time over a single wire and parallel data transmission is when several bits of data are sent down several wires at the same time. The methods of error detection are party checks, party blocks, checksum, echo check, check digits, automatic repeat request. With encryption, this is the process of turning the data into an unreadable form so it doesn't make sense to hackers and other attackers. Two types of encryption, the symmetric and asymmetric encryption. Symmetric encryption is when the same key is used for both encrypting and decrypting the data and asymmetric uses a public key and a private key. Let's now move on to the hardware. Within hardware we have the computer architecture and the CPU consists of the control unit, the arithmetic logic unit, output device, input devices and the memory unit. The CPU consists of three buses, the address bus which is unidirectional, the data bus which is bidirectional, the control bus which is both unidirectional and bidirectional. The following registers also exist in the architecture which are program counter, memory address register, memory data register and the current instructions register. The fetch execute cycle goes like this, the PC contains the address of the next instruction to be fetched, the address is copied to the MAR via the address bus, the instruction of the address is copied to the MDR temporarily, the instruction in the MDR is then placed in the CIR, the CIR and the value in the PC is incremented by 1 pointing to the next instruction to be fetched and finally the instruction is then decoded and executed. The factors that determine the performance of the CPU are system clock, length of the data buses, cache and the cores. Let's now talk about input and output devices. Since this is a summary, I will only be naming the devices you need to know rather than the properties that you also need to know. Under input devices, we have 2D scanners, 3D scanners, barcode readers, QR codes, digital cameras, keyboards, microphones and touchscreens. Within touchscreens, we have capacitive, infrared and resistive. Under output devices, we have inkjet printers, laser printers, 3D printers, 2D and 3D cutters, loudspeakers, headphones, LCD and LED monitors. We have three types of memories that you need to know, primary memory which is RAM and ROM, secondary memory which is HDD, HDD and SSD, and offline memory which involves CD, DVD and Blu-ray. Finally, under network hardware, we have the network interface card, the media access control address and the IP address, and finally the routers. Let's now go over the software side. 
Functions of a typical operating system would include multitasking, memory management, managing files, management of user accounts, and hardware management. Now talking about interrupts, which is a signal that causes the operating system to stop what it's doing and service a task. Computers can only understand machine code, therefore translators are needed and we need to know three languages which are high level languages, low level languages and assembly language. To translate these languages we need to know three types of translators which are compiler, interpreter and assembler. Going over utility software now, utility programs include virus checkers, defragmentation software, disk analysis, repair tools, and ETC. The utility programs run on the background of a computer in order for the computer to be managed. Uniform resource locator, which are URLs, are used to locate and access web pages. And the typical format of URLs is the protocol followed by the website address, the path, and the file name. Under cybersecurity, we need to know the different types of threats uh, and this would include the brute force attack, data interception, the DDoS attack, the hacking, malware, phishing, and farming. Going over the last topic, which is artificial intelligence, it's a branch of computer science that deals with the simulation of intelligent human behavior. We have three types of AI, which is narrow AI, general AI, and strong AI.